When I think of a really bad day, I think of Simon the Cyrenian, the guy that we come across in Mark chapter 15, and this is the single phrase that we hear about him. In Mark chapter 15, verse 21, we read about the Roman centurions, the ones that are taking Jesus up to be crucified in the midst of Jesus' really, really bad day. We encounter this gentleman, and they compelled a passerby. Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. Now I want you to imagine for a moment, Simon, the Cyrenian. I've sometimes wondered what Simon's plans were for that day. This wasn't a man that was caught up with the crowd, gathering to gaze with this macabre curiosity at this grim procession of prisoners, beaten and tortured, beginning their long walk up to the hill of their execution. This was a working man, perhaps a farmer or a shepherd, approaching the holy city the day before Passover with his two sons in tow. Perhaps his Intentions were as simple as gathering a few supplies with his family in preparation for celebrating the Jewish holiday. And I can imagine him stumbling upon this grisly scene, turning to cover the eyes of his children as the cruelly wounded convicts passed before them. I imagine him turning to walk away, simply passing by as he attempted to shield his offspring from the horrid image of those men staggering under the weight of the wooden implements of their final sentence. Perhaps it was this very act, that subtle shift to avoid the gruesome scene which caught the attention of the Roman soldier. Whatever plans Simon had for that day, whatever lofty intentions he had for protecting his children's eyes were about to change. For at that moment, Jesus stumbled, and the soldiers cried out, You, carry this man's cross. Somewhere in some heavenly place, I can almost hear the whisper of Christ's three-part maxim to his disciples. Deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. Simon's plans that day were laid aside, and he had to take up the burden of that old rugged cross. He followed Jesus. Simon was changed that day, and his name was eternally recorded in connection with the most sacred event in all of Scripture, the crucifixion of Christ. But Simon was not alone. He had hoped to preserve his sons from witnessing that solemn march to Golgotha, and instead they witnessed their father taking up the burden of another. He did not complain. He did not refuse. He simply denied his own plans and responded. And such a witness leaves an indelible mark on those who observe it. Little Alexander. Little Rufus. And I've sometimes wondered just what happened to those two. Perhaps Paul the Apostle, writing to the Romans years later, can offer us a subtle insight into just how impactful this encounter was to the heart and mind of young Rufus, when in Romans thirteen sixteen, he extends a greeting. Greet Rufus, he writes, chosen in the Lord. Sometimes we encounter really, really bad days. Things that we have set out to avoid. Scenes that we don't want to lay witness to. Events that we want no part of. And yet, at no fault of our own, we are drawn into the mix. And when we do that, something happens. When we're willing to take up the cross of another, when we're willing to endure and step through to the final scene, we sometimes discover that it's these very moments that not only impact us, but impact those around us in ways that we could never foresee. Just like little Rufus, little Alexander, and Simon the Cyrenian.